Oh. You know, manipulation is one of our favorite tasks in procurement, right? This is the next lesson on data types and today we cover text. Alright, text data types. What's so difficult about that? Well, Nime offers some great ways to work with text. A lot of the things you might be doing in the beginning when working with text might be data cleaning. You get shitty data and want to make some sense out of it. To do that, you need to clean it up. A lot of these tasks are done using the string manipulation node. Oh. You know, manipulation is one of our favorite tasks in procurement, right? Today I'm going to show you three quick ways to work with texts in Nime that you can use day in, day out. So let's fight up Nime and let me show you how it's done. All right, so here we are with our trusted base file in our Nime application software tool whatsoever. And we can import our base data. Here we have our thousand rows. So let me show you the three things I want to show you. And as I said before, they have a lot to do with string manipulation. And that is exactly what we want to do first. So let me check the string manipulation. And then I explain to you what we're going to do. So just edit like this. All right. We label it and we call it only get buyers last names and that's what we want to do if you have a look at this data table you see here we have a string or a text column with the complete names we have all kinds of different buyers in here of course also repetitive and we just want to get their last names and what you can see from the structure of this column is that Usually, the structure is like last name, comma, space, first name, and then an abbreviation. So how can we differentiate the last name from the rest of the string content? And it's a pretty similar question than you would ask in Excel. Well, basically, in Nime, the response to that is use a substring, and we use that in the string manipulation. So let me just open up this one. And we have seen that the comma basically separates the last name from the rest of the cell. So what we want to do is use one of these functions here, and we're using the substring function. And you can see we have substring here in certain variations if you want substring only with the string to be focused on and with the starting number so it takes all the rest or substring with string start and length and that works similar if you want to compare it to microsoft excel once again to microsoft excel um like an optional argument so that's the one we want to use and here is a lengthy explanation also with some examples but as i tend to know how it works let me just um, put it into the expression by double clicking on it so of course the column we want to work on that's the string we want to work on is buyer that goes first the next thing we want to do is we want to start at um, basically character number zero. If you remember from the last chapter, wherever Nime counts, Nime, like programming language, starts counting from zero. So we start from zero. Okay, now, but what, how, how long do we want it to um, have the substring? And th the response to that is, well, it depends. And it depends um, basically on the length um, of the of the um, remainder and how do we how do we find it out what the length is we say index of chars that's another or oh, let me just select it from here that's another function as you can see here 
and um, we use this one here. Um, search a string to find the first position of any character in the given set of characters. And if you remember, um, if the comma is at the fifth place, the index of the uh, character comma would be five and we would basically choose a length of five. That's how we would do it. So we select index of chars. We select once again the buyer column because that's the only one we focus on. And the character we're searching for is the comma. All right. And that's basically it. We have nested functions. It's the same as when in Microsoft Excel or other spreadsheet applications, you can nest functions and formulas into each other. So we want to replace a column. And in this case, we want to replace the buyer column. Let's just execute. And you see all of a sudden, we only have the last names, of course, in different lengths. So that was the first use case. Now, let me go to the second use case. Let me show you the table once again. One thing you can see from this column is, you see we have dates here, but they are formatted as strings. So what can we do? Can we turn strings into dates? Yes, we can do that and we will do that. And what we want to do is basically pivot tables, but this time we're using different node, not group by as you might have expected. So, but the first thing is the string um, node that we're working on. And the one we're looking for is string two and then string to date and time. So we connect it to here and say string to date and time. Let's give it a label. Um, and we call it convert PO date column. All right. So it suggests us all kinds of string columns that are in here. We only want one and that's the PO date. And we also don't want date and time. We just want date. And sometimes for some strange reason, let's just set this to English. We can set a, a language uh, scheme here. Um, it should be ENUS usually, I would say. Let me see, ENUS for English United States. And we can let Norm guess the format. This looks pretty good to be honest. So let's see if this works out. And I show you how you can find out if it worked out. So click OK click execute and then have a look at the output table. And you see from this little icon here, the content still looks the same, but now this is a date column, which is quite interesting. You see this from this little calendar icon, whereas other string columns have this still this S icon. So now I'm guessed the right format here. Um, to make this a little bit more applicable to a procurement life, we want to do a little bit more. We want to extract the quarters from it. And that's what we do with extract, um, extract time and date or extract date and time fields. And we connect it to here, extract quarters. So let's just open this up and we say we just, you know, it already recognize, hey, Nime already knows, hmm, looks, there is only one date field in there. And that's already a little bit into tomorrow's topic where we talk about data types, dates, but let's just finish this use case here. And we just want to extract quarters. So we press F7 and you see we have the quarters in here. And what we can do right now is we do a pivot table. Um, pivoting, that's what it's called. So it's a little bit different than the group by node. And what we want to do, and it looks a little bit strange because it says three different output nodes. So that's very interesting, very good use case. So let's quickly label it. We call it group by quarter, um, pivot by vendor, PVO sum. And that basically tells us what we want to do. We want to group by quarter. So this goes into the group columns. Once again, we have here nested tabs. We want to pivot by vendor. 
and we want to aggregate the PO value, but not the mean as always, but the sum. All right, we can leave it like this. And now if we execute this and look at the results table, we now have three different as the results tables. We have a pivot table, group totals and pivot totals. Let's look at each one of them. And you basically see for each quarter, here are the companies and you see the revenue of the PVO they made with us in quarter three, in quarter four. The second output table, which is the group totals, is basically the totals of each quarter, totally not differentiated by, not differentiated by um, vendors. And the final one is the pivot totals, where you basically can see, okay, which, how much did we make um, in the overall table with Adobe, with AltaVista, with Apple, and so on. So that was the second use case. Now let's get to the third use case. And the third use case is also a very common one. We want to delete spaces from text. Once again, have a look at our file table here. And let's just imagine we want in our material field description, we don't want any spaces. We want that all these terms, if we have more than one word in here, we want that they are concatenated to each other. So how would we do this? Once again, with the string manipulation. Connect it to the Excel reader like this. How do we call it? Delete spaces from material field description. And sometimes we want to replace something with nothing. And how do we do this? Well, we use the replace function. So let's just go here and we see we have um, replaces here. And basically this very first use case is what we want to do. We just go into the, uh, we take the replace function. We say the field we're working on or the column is the material field description. We want to search for spaces, which is basically quotation mark space quotation mark. And we want to replace it with nothing with this, which is quotation mark, quotation mark. And what we want to do is we want to override the material field description. So let's have a look how this works. Execute. And you now see we have everything together. No more spaces here in this column. That's also a very common use case. And in this case, it could also have been something different. If you want to delete, uh, um, differentiate between these words, you could also replace the space with a hashtag or something comparable. So now you know some decent ways to clean and work with data, which are originally strings. Tomorrow, as we said, we close this chapter again by looking at dates. We partially touched on this one already in the second use case of today, but we dive much deeper in it tomorrow. But before we do, now a question to you guys. NIME has powerful text mining capabilities. Would you be interested in learning about them as well? Let me know in the comments down below. A short outlook. Tomorrow we close the data types chapter already with the data data type. Huh? I meant with the data type of a time and date fields. After that, we have a look at where to get additional NIME knowledge for free. Plus, in the next module, the advanced module, we'll cover how to export formatted Excel and automate the automation, which is kind of meta. And if you don't want to miss out on these topics to really put your newly discovered automation skills in high gear and become the number one resource people want to connect with, then hit like and subscribe under this video. So see you tomorrow in the next video lesson. A lot of the things you might be you get shitty data and want the base file for whatever reason it doesn't show here but if we import it oh see it doesn't work. Now let's get to the third you you and sure sure
If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with NIME. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.